Arguments, fights, yelling, screaming was a daily battle. When I was growing up was physical and verbal abuse from my father. Every night he would black out, he would get drunk, he would hit my brother and my mom. It's happening in every neighborhood. Under the door! Who is he? Huh? This is why you really want to leave me. No, I didn't. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction and violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. Very good evening to all. May God bless you. Welcome to your program, Problems and Solution of this Saturday. We are here able and ready to help you and doesn't matter your situation. We are here to tell you that uh, for your problem there is a solution. The same way that this lady that you're going to watch the testimony of tonight, Miss Louise, she found help. She had nightmares. For more than nine years she suffered with nightmares. But one day she decided to give her step of faith and to change her life. And this is what we want to tell you, my dear friend, that God is there where you are, but you need to be also with God. And in order for you to be with God, what you need to do is to give your step of faith and decide to change your life. That's why the Universal Church is here. That's why we are here right now to help. If you need help right now, if you are desperate, if you are depressed, if you don't know what to do with your problems, you need to talk to someone, you can be in contact with us. We have our online number, that is 0861212155. You have our WhatsApp number, that is below your screen. And also, if you want to watch me from Facebook, we have our, our page, and you can be in contact with us through the messenger of our Facebook, Universal Church Sweden, okay? And uh, surely that we're going to have someone that will help you and they're going to give you the direction that you need to take. And through that direction, your life will be totally transformed. Let's watch the testimony of Miss Louise, and we'll be back with you straight after. One issue that I used to really have was um, problems sleeping at night. Um, for about nine years straight, I would literally be having the same nightmare on and off, on and off. And it was a very weird but almost realistic nightmare. So it was like the area I would live in would morph into something different. And then I would end up being chasing, like being chased by black figures, like just running through my area. I would recognize like key spots of, you know, where I lived in this nightmare. And so what would happen for me to get to sleep, I would be rocking myself back and forth like my head just so it would rock me to sleep. I couldn't sleep without music and the television on. So for me, it took me a very long time and then before I knew it, I wouldn't know what time it is and I have to wake up and I'm going to school. And this would happen for on and off nine years. And for me, it was very difficult because it got to a point where I was so scared to walk through my area. And there was a particular part of this area where in the dream, I would literally be faced with this big black figure and it would chase me all the way back home. So because of this part of the nightmare, I wouldn't be able to go to this particular area in my own area. I wouldn't be able to go through that place. I would take another route, the long way route round, just so that I wouldn't go to that area. Even in the dream, it, was, it felt so real. It's like I could almost touch myself and feel like, but I would wake up and I would know that, oh, it was just a dream. And it would always end the same way. So for me, it was like, if it's almost kind of repetitive, it must be real. 
and there was even cases where um, I would sleepwalk. So I would go to the bathroom, I would turn the tap on, I would knock down the bike in the corridor, I would do many things, but be fully unconscious of what I'm doing. All these things I only knew because my mum would witness me doing it, or she would wake up and she would see that the bathroom had been run. Once me and my mum, we went on holiday, and we obviously had to share the same bed. And I ended up beating her up in my sleep. So she woke up with scratches all over her. And she was like, Louise, you just attacked me at night. And I was like, but I, I didn't know. I felt so guilty inside of me. I was like, I, I would never like, I would never want to hurt my mom. Even though we didn't really have a good relationship the way that I wanted it at that time, I never dreamt of even hurting her. So when I saw that, I felt like a monster. But even though it wasn't me, I just felt like a monster. And even at times I would have dreams of like pushing my mum down the stairs. It was just, it was terrible. So for me, it was like, I didn't want to sleep. So when I went to university, um, things got worse because, you know, late night partying and you're up all night or you're studying. So you become restless. And for me, the only time I could sleep was during the day. I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't. I'd be up maybe till six o'clock knowing that I had lectures, but I couldn't sleep. And it got to a point where once I was so tired that I, I completely passed out during the day. I missed my lectures, I missed everything, I was gone. To a point where people were so worried they had to break into my, my room. And I was, and they broke into my room and I was still sleeping. And then they woke me up, they were like, Louise, like, where have you been? And I was just like, I've just been sleeping. And for me, I've, that was really one of the worst moments for me because it was like anyone could have just come into my room and attacked me. I was so vulnerable, I didn't even know what to think. Thank goodness it was, you know, people who were actually kind of looking after me in a sense. So, but for me, that was one of the worst moments and that attacking my mum at night because, again, I, I never would have intentionally ever wanted to harm her. But when I saw those cuts, it, it even hurt me personally, it did. There was nothing to tell me, oh, this is not right, this is not normal. It was just normality to me. It's only when I came to the church, um, I was coming to the Friday meetings where I understood that, okay, these nightmares, these things that I'm doing in my sleep, isn't, it's not me. And I started to understand the, the roots behind it. And it's funny because even as I started attending the Friday meetings, I had these nightmares again, they came up. But the funny thing is I remember the very last time I had this nightmare, because I remember I went that night just so kind of angry that all these years I had been experiencing it and I finally understood what was behind it. So I remember doing like a, a very strong prayer on me saying, it's not gonna be no more. But that night I had the nightmare, but it ended differently because usually in the nightmare, I would run to my house, I would be do like dodging all these dark figures, but I would run to my house and the door would not close properly. It wouldn't close, it, so it was a thing where it was like, I would close the door behind me, but you could see outside. It was very strange. But this very last nightmare, I'll never forget, the door closed. And for me, it was like, I woke up believing that I had been set free. I, I knew that that was the last time I was gonna have that nightmare, and I didn't have it again. I didn't have it again, so from then, I started to have more peaceful sleeps. I didn't have to rock myself, even now, I'm at a point where if the light is on, I'm like, turn it off. Like, trust me, it doesn't take long for me to sleep at all. I sleep peacefully and probably sleep too much sometimes. But honestly, I don't have no more nightmares. I don't sleepwalk. I don't attack people in my sleep. I'm not scared to go through that area. I'm free. So. When Christ walked the earth, his ears heard the cries of the brokenhearted. His eyes saw the plight of the afflicted. His hands healed the sick and fed the hungry. His feet carried the good news of a loving God. His mouth spoke the words that changed the world. And he calls us to do the same.
We are the body of Christ. We are back with your program and if you are there on the other side and you are like this lady was, depressed, you know, with uh, insomnia, depression, you hear voices, you have a blockage in your life, what you need to do is to decide to change your life. Decision comes from us. The moment that we take the action of faith to change our lives. And what you need to do is to take this action of faith. Maybe you have been knocking at many doors and the doors simply are closed to you. Maybe you have been trying many ways and you get to the point that you are desperate because you don't know where to go. Because you went to place A, place B, place Y, and nothing worked out for you. You know, the Bible says a verse that I particularly like a lot because it's very simple. That says, the things that are impossible for man, it is possible for God. You, what that means, that is very strong. Because things that are impossible for man, there are things that you, my dear viewer, you can do it. You can do it with your knowledge, with your with your strength, you can make it, but there are things that are impossible. And I, I'm talking to you who had an impossible problem. I'm talking to you who have an impossible problem. You who say like this, the problem that I'm facing today is impossible because I tried, I tried, and I tried, and the situation simply is the same or even worse. So what you need to do is to come, because he said the things that are impossible for man are possible to God. Give your step of faith. Approach yourself to the altar. Approach yourself to the altar means approach yourself to God and surely that your life will change. Tomorrow Sunday at the Universal Church all over the world, we are living the spirit of the decision. And if you need a decision in your life, do not waste time. Join us tomorrow. Here in Stockholm will be at 10, 9 o'clock in the morning, our first service, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, also 12.30, 4 o'clock and 6 p.m. What you need to do is to call us to reserve your place because as, the, as we are under restrictions um, of eight people, you cannot just come to the time that is better for you. You need to call us beforehand and we're going to set up a, an appointment. Okay, you can call us on our WhatsApp number or text us and we're going to give you the best time for you. If you live in, in, in Gothenburg, we have also the same times. 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12.30, 4 o'clock and 6 p.m. And you are our guest to join us as well. Okay? The, the, the address of our headquarters is at Birgersgotten 106. Birgersgotten 106. And you can also see the address of our branch in Gothenburg, also of our special work in Vasteros, and that we have on Saturdays every two weeks, and also of our special work in Malmo, that we're going to start on the 10th of April. 10th of April in Malmo, we're going to start there the prayer. And if you need more information about us, you can visit our website, www.uckg.sc. Let's continue watching testimonies of people who have been seeing their lives being totally transformed through the power of faith. And we'll be back with you straight after. Venetia and before I was going through a health problem it was a chronic fatigue issue that I had so I, previously I was able to work go to work do what I needed to do I had energy but after some time I really realized that I was housebound so I couldn't leave the house I couldn't do simple stuff like personal care I couldn't come to the meetings I couldn't do absolutely anything I could just about move around the house because I had absolutely no energy and when I would go to the doctors they first said maybe it's depression and I said I'm not depressed they said maybe it's this they tried to give some medication, but everything that they tried, it wasn't working. So whereas a normal person, for example, they would have be able to get through a whole day's work, me just getting up and getting ready in the morning, it finished my energy. I had nothing. I had no energy to do anything. And I was feeling weak all the time, sick all the time, dizzy. I had different um, symptoms that I was facing, spinning, um, adrenaline through the night, just many different symptoms were popping up. So when I participated in a purpose that we was doing that was for the water, the blessed water, 
And I started to drink that. I started to see over a period of time that I started to gain energy. I was able to get my energy back. And today I'm working full time. I'm back to a busy day's life. Obviously now it's balanced, but I'm back to a normal day's work. I'm able to deal with family. I'm able to come to church. I'm able to work, do my side business, do the youth work that I do. I'm able to do everything with no problems. These were the things I used to hear. The alcohol destroyed me and destroyed everything else in my life. Abandoning my son, my faith in my marriage, domestic abuse, my finances, a womanizer. In a few seconds, I went from heaven to hell until I decided to stop and change once and for all. And this is the job that changed my life from who I was to who I am today. God help me take back my life and my family. Come and visit us at the UCKG Help Centre, Stockholm, Sunday, 11am. Depression. You can beat it. My dear viewer, the opportunity is there before you. Grab this opportunity, hold up on this opportunity, and say to yourself, I'm going to change my life. Okay? Do not wait anymore. Do not just be watching this program and hoping to have a new life. God has a new life for you. Okay? If you need to know more about our universal church, about our ministry, you can have all our information through the, on, the, on our website www.uckg.se okay here in sweden and also all over the world if you are watching me any place of the world through the facebook you can also visit the universal church near you it was a pleasure to be with you may the lord of the bible bless you all and until next time i'm not leaving this hospital until i know what's wrong with my daughter you want out that's fine with me!